Indonesian people and white people is not your enemy. They are people, they are human beings, same like us. We not fight with the people, but we fight against the colonial system. Hello and welcome to Planet Critical, the podcast for a world in crisis. My name is Rachel Donald. I'm a climate corruption journalist and your host. Every week I interview experts who are battling to save our planet. My guests are scientists, politicians, academics, journalists and activists. They explain the complexities of the energy, economic, political and cultural crises we face today, revealing what's really going on and what they think needs to be done. These are the stories of the big picture. Go to planetcritical.com to learn more and subscribe. I have a very special episode of Planet Critical for you all today. Subscribers to my newsletter at planetcritical.com will know that I spent some time in Papua New Guinea this summer. I had an extraordinary time, which included coming face to face with President Emmanuel Macron and questioning him about France's geopolitical strategy in Papua New Guinea. The following day, I found myself walking through the forest with Geoffrey, the chairman of the Free Papua Movement and a commander of the West Papua National Liberation Army. The Free Papua Movement is the fight for West Papuans to win their independence from Indonesia. It is a little-known conflict, despite the fact that half a million West Papuans have been killed at the hands of the Indonesian military. The movement grabbed international headlines in February when they kidnapped Philip Mertens, a New Zealand and Indonesian citizen. As Jeffrey explains in this episode, they kidnapped him for political bargaining to get attention from the international community who turn a blind eye to the pillaging of West Papua at the hands of the Indonesian government. This is the first update that the world has had about the hostage Philip in months. It's also the longest interview that Jeffrey has given about what is happening in West Papua. The history of how it went from the hands of the Dutch to Indonesia, how it was used as a pawn in the fight between communism and capitalism in the 60s, the genocide that has occurred within his country, the resources that have been stripped, and the fight that they will not stop until they win. This is a fight, he says, for freedom, for sovereignty, for the right to a home. We are not fighting against the Indonesian people, Jeffrey says. We are fighting against the capitalist system of extraction and colonialism. My name is Jeffrey Bamanak. I'm a chairman of Free Papua Movement and West Papua National Liberation Army. In Bahasa, we call Organisasi Papua Merdeka dan Tentara Perlindungan Nasional. Um, a little bit story about West Papua, the political history. Um, Free Papua Movement or OPM uh, been established in West Papua uh, 28 July 1968 by indigenous people of West Papua. Um, that organization is a mother organization, parent organization, fight for uh, indigenous people right of West Papua. We fight for OPM, we fight for right, our right, right for freedom, independence, and, and sovereignty. Who are you fighting with? We fight for Indonesian colonial government. So we we not fight with the uh, Indonesian people or Java people. We fight for colonial system where by Indonesian colonial. So we fight for that system. So anybody with Indonesian, like Indonesian army, they're calling Indonesian military for or TNI, Tentara Nasional Indonesian with a police. Indonesian, with the law, colonial law, colonial constitution in Papua, we fight for that. Against that? Against, yeah, against that Indonesian colonial constitution in, in West Papua. Tell me the history of how Indonesia came to own West Papua. Yeah, Indonesian uh, came in West Papua um, uh, 1st May 1963. But before the Indonesian came in Papua, We've been colonized by that government of Netherlands, New Guinea. We've been under that government in, in West Papua as a province, province level. 
they said the Netherlands New Guinea, that Netherlands government or that government, they've been um, facilitating and allow West Papuan people to exercise the international uh, law after World War II, that uh, international law meaning that uh, United Nations Resolution 1514. That, that resolution was said to uh, all the, the colonial uh, region must be independent. It not because economic uh, reason or political, whatever, but they have to, uh, the colonization region must be independent. So that, that government been used that uh, resolution 1514 and then we've been um, conduct our own embryo with uh, that government, what we call is Netherlands uh, New Guinea Red. So the time we've been declared 1st December 1961 is a, our, our national day is an embryo. We are facilitated by that colony and then we West Papua have been declared like we're ready to get nation. And then we've been say that 1st July 1971, after 10 years, so that 10 years time, that government will look after West Papua, the lining about the uh, administration of nation and then something like that. So between 10 years from 1961 to 1971, the Indonesian uh, influenced by United States of America because the economic uh, interest in my place in highlands of West Papua the Freeport mine. They've been conduct new agreement, what we call is a New York agreement in New York. The agreement be met by American government, Indonesian colonial, and Dutch colony. Dutch just leave West Papua after they granting independence in 1st December 1961 because that global politic, you know, fight World War II between socialists and capitalists. So that Indonesia, they use, Sukarno, they use that opportunity. They're trying to lobby and negotiate with Russia. And then they give some big challenges to America, have to do a fast decision. If America, you didn't support Indonesia to get West Papua, Indonesia get West Papua and then Indonesia will join with Russia. That the underground movement politic met by Sukarno and Suhart. So that at the time, American government, they have no so choice to, to uh, respect the political right of West Papua. But they pressure that colony to have uh, leave West Papua and the UN process, they call UNTEA in West Papua at the time, United Nations Temporary Authority Executive. This uh, I remember is the name who artisans and the leadership of artisans. So because UN, they influenced by the America, so America used the UN system, and then they influence Indonesia, and then that colony to do the New York Agreement. So to maintain the economic order of capitalism in the world, which was under threat by socialism, the United States pressured the Dutch to leave West yes. Papua yes. and hand it over to Indonesia yes. in order to buy their yes. acceptance with the world order yes. and give all of the resources of West Papua yes. to Indonesia. Yes, you're right. Because, you know, in internal politics of Indonesia, Indonesia, they're trying to get independent from that colony but they have separate history with West Papua. And then um, they have connection with Russia, and then Russia gives uh, some logistics to Indonesia. Can. So that situation victimized West Papua from that time up until today. So, you know, they do the New York Agreement 1962, 15 August 1962, excluding West Papua. So who signed the New York Agreement? We don't know. We, we West Papua, we didn't sign that agreement, but that signed agreement by uh, 
uh, America, and then Netherlands and Indonesia. Right. You know that that fail and uh, what we call that agreement is abuse our right because they sign about West Papua, but we are West Papua not being involved with that agreement when the input process and output and then what for we don't know everything but in inside that the agreement they give west papua to uh, have right to choice the political uh, right with uh, the call of edge of a choice bahasa called uh, pepera uh, 1969 no play process must be done in west papua but in the Article 8 in that agreement, they say to one man, one vote. One man, one vote. One man, one vote. But Indonesia not been implementing that, that, that process, one man, one vote. So how many people voted? But only West Papua, original West Papua, only, only 600. 600 people. Yeah, 600 Out people. of 800,000 at the time. Yeah. yeah. From 800,000, only 600 people. And then 400 is from Indonesia. Some, some military of Indonesia, some others uh, from uh, dead people from around Java. So only 1,026 people bid vote under control of military operation. And 400 of those were Javanese. 400 right. Javanese from outside Indonesia, from Indonesia, and then 600 first Papuan. But 600 also they under control of Indonesian and, military. And how were the military so threatening? They, Indonesian military from 1960, 1963, four, five until 1969 is under control of military intelligence operation, military operation. We still fight that situation. Edge of free choice. We OPM still fight at the time. Free Papua movement. Some other place we still fight. And then some other place they're trying to uh, vote and then. Uh, Tell me, how did the military threaten? There were 600 Papuans in the act of no choice. The uh, military, you, you know, they get from place, one one leaders from place, they get them in the military uh, uh, pressure, intimidation, they get them to one one village, they put it in one uh, like, like classroom, and then they said, you have to uh, vote Indonesia. When you say Papua, because that time they didn't use like uh, vote in the like letter, you only just call yeah. Papua or Indonesia mm. like that. So when you say Papua or you say Netherlands, we will kill you. So they have no. They no have choice. no choice. They have said Papua because when they some some people they say we we Papua, they kill them in another place. So that situation. You said they're threatening life. So they have no choice to do anything. So the act of free choice, what we call the act of no choice because that situation. Okay. They from that uh so that situation make OPM getting big strong to fight. The free papa movement. Yeah, free papa movement fight. So we OPM because that that organization born by perspective of uh West Papua Melanism by consensus of we have to liberate our own. We have to choose our own future from our own perspective, not by colonial perspective or anything. So that we get the resolution 1514, the UN give guaranteeing independent for West Papua and facilitated by uh, Dutch government. We do another big meeting and we proclaim West Papua as a one is a, it's a 1st July 1971. We claim that New York agreement and act of the choice that we reject. We didn't know that agreement because we have been informed. We reject everything. And then we come back to fight against Indonesian colonial start from 1971. So 1st July 1971, we proclaim West Papua as a one nation under control of one Brigadier General Seth Jaffetrum Korep and then uh, Jacob Rai as a 
uh, leaders of the Senate. So after we proclaim that, we make our own military. OPM facilitated to make our military wing. That's how we call West Papua National Liberation Army. From that, we fight up until today, 2023. And how many right, of you are in the army? Right now, we have uh, 34,000 in all, all region in Papua. All region in Papua under control of OPM is a political body. Look after constitution, control uh, military wing and diplomatic wing. So that that uh, main actor in, in Papua. We have on some uh, political group like student movement, customary council, uh, church movement, and women movement. We have many groups. But in the main actor in the parent organization made by first be in the beginning is the OPM. So that's what we still fight. So our perspective of fight, like, like I say, uh, we, we didn't fight with Indonesian uh, civilian, Javanese, or white people in West Papua, but we against the colonial system, including and also capitalists, where they use Indonesian, because we, we, we know very well Behind the Indonesian, America, and some other country today still colonial, colonialize us in the economic perspective. How much wealth are they extracting from the country every year? When in 2006, I have been in geology, 2006 is uh, mining one year is uh, 800 trillion rupiah. Wow. 800. They control by Rio Tinto, McMoran, and now it's uh, by Indonesia. They, 2001, they already do. Uh, 2001, they already do inside in Indonesia. They um, review um, one constitution in the mining constitution. And then 2021, uh, um, from McMoran, they just... Uh, Cooperate with uh, Indonesian, what they call him, McMoran Company with Inalum Company. Inalum, that company from Indonesian government. So 51% from Indonesian government, and then 49% is for McMoran, Freeport mm -hmm. McMoran. So one year, when estimate, when I've been calculate in my own, is 800 uh, trillion, 800 trillion. So West Papua is incredibly resource rich. Yes. West Papua not only Freeport mining, you know. Yeah. In in, in Manokwari is uh, BP Bintuni. BP the uh, oil and gas. And then another place that we have another company, gold and mineral. And another place we have timber. Loggers, yeah. Logging and then uh, sea and then so many resources. Right. including oil palm and everything. So you are fighting against the Indonesian military with 34,000 people to protect, to get your freedom and to protect your land. How many Indonesian military personnel are in West Papua? Our intelligence, OPM intelligence, we call it a, a Papua Intelligence Service. We count between the organic, organic is a formal military, non-organic is an undercover and intelligent and also military, militia. Militia is a, Indonesia can use some other people from civilian from outside or some other Muslim group from outside. They're using, come inside. They're using Muslim militias. They, they're using to against us. Right. We fight with them too. So they all is a 700,000. 700,000 700, between because before only one one uh, province, Papua province, but now they already divided to six province. Six province and then 700,000. When you go in Papua from, from here to three kilos, another military post. 
not three kilos, one kilo, when the place where they see the OPM base, 500 meters from here, another military base. 500 meters, another military base. So the military, they control uh, government system in Papua. They control mining system in Papua, government system in Papua. So people don't have any choice to can do anything. You student movement or you church movement or you a customary movement, you're trying to say anything about your right, you want a target. How are you achieving anything? There's 34,000 of you up against 700,000. How are you pro making progress? Like I say, in quantity, they can have number. But uh, we know we fight for. We know we fight for. We fight for the, we defending right and truth. So we didn't count, you can came with so many number, but we still face them. We still fight against them. And clear, you know, when you see in, in fashion, Indonesian military in Papua start from 1963. The Sukarno give mandate to Suharto, can do Tikora, three commando, three command by Indonesian military in fashion in Fensen in Papua. But from the 1963 up until today, they can't kill our ideology. They can't kill our philosophy. They can't kill our fight. That's because we believe what we fight for. Mm, your freedom. Yeah. We fight for our right, freedom, dignity, and truth. So. You can come with any number, whatever. You can come with any uh, intelligent equipment. You can come with any kind of uh, technology. You can. I will fight with you. So that's our commitment. We still stand up with that uh, consensus. The population of West Papua and Papua New Guinea in the 60s was 800,000 apiece. It is now 8 to 10 million in Papua New Guinea and only 2 million yes. in West Papua. And yes. the, the estimate is that 500,000 Papuans if, have been killed by the Indonesian yes. military. Would you call it a genocide? Yes. Uh, when you go to Google, uh, you can look at uh, document, uh, statistic by Australian government and that colony at the 1969, um, the number of population between Papua and Papua New Guinea was Papua and Papua New Guinea. It's 800,000 and 800,000. We've been equal. Uh, but well, today, in now 2023, Papua New Guinea may be uh, 8 to 10 million. But with Papua, we only, indigenous people, is only 2 million. We have 2 million. How many people have been killed by the Indonesian military? Yeah, the rest is killed by Indonesian. So that number killed by Indonesian in some document we have, and then some document by all NGOs group and some university, is uh, 500,000, more than 500,000. More than 500,000 killed by Indonesian. And then 32,000, they leave West Papua. And then 1984, they will leave West Papua and come over to Papua New Guinea, and then they've been break out to another country. You see, was Papua in Australia, was Papua in Netherlands, because we've been fight and come out. You, when you see some Melanesian country like Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Solomon Island, Vanuatu, they in own own country. They've not been like refugee and come out, leave the country. Only was Papua. We have in all of our country because we fight and we come out. So maybe international call us refugee, somebody call us border crosser, somebody call us Indonesia call us criminal or something like that. But they own they own um they own stigma. We are not criminal, no, we are not separatists. We fight, we are freedom fighters. So where people I come back to um genocide, systematic genocide, in the, in the report, not report, convention by the United Nations, 
1968 or 1948. This is systematic genocide definition is one colonial country, they control one entity or one people group, ethnic group. one religion, ethnic group, then they kill systematically. Meaning that they didn't kill by a military operation, but some system where we cannot know, but they control us. So that same like something situation uh, in, in, in Papua right now. When I born in my place, that place, God created me with my fellow, with everything there. And then I can make my population can grow up. But the, when Indonesia colonialized West Papua, they're moving us from our place, from our filo. So when, when we leave that our place and then we go to another place, we cut the growing population in our place because we leave our place, we go to another place. So that space, uh, what we call is a genocide. And another, another thing, something like now going on in Papua, when you sick and you go to hospital, they will give one special treatment under the, uh, they call a special autonomy in Papua. The special autonomy, they've been conducted from 2001 up until uh, 2021, 20 years. But they extend again because in, in special autonomy, in the international perspective, is a autonomy region, they can uh, develop the region between another way be specialized that region because some other political situation. But practically in Indonesia, the uh, special autonomy is different. They're stealing our resource in the special way. They kill our own people in special way. Like when you, our, our West Papuan sick and go to hospital, they can inject him with the poison. They can inject, it, 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 they, they can give a treatment with the, uh, they kill them. You're saying doctors in Indonesian you hospitals Indonesian are doctor. killing West Papuans. We have so many cases about that. When we go in a hospital and then we dead by injection by Indonesian, but time we, we cannot go get the complaint to uh, police. Because they, they have police, they're controlled by Indonesia. They're all Indonesian. They're running free. So we don't have right to it. Can get their own cases. So that situation every, every day. So when you see, you, you see them, um, one day maybe 10 to 20 people in Indonesia, every day we die. Every day. They kill us with a portion in, in restaurant. When you round the street and then... Uh, one car with run they, you can, over. they can they can kill you and run yeah. kill and run something like that that's yeah. the situation what we have we're facing now you're saying indonesia is committing a genocide in west papua why does nobody in the world know about this that is something uh, is two things for me first thing indonesia they use on diplomatic to because they they protect their economic interests. You know, they protect economic interests and then behind the Indonesia, America and some other countries, like example like Freeport, is a hundred and fifty three country. They own the uh, Freeport mining. In and West are, Papua. In West Papua. Oh. So America and including Australia they're all in behind the Indonesian. So the economic interest is a one uh, problem where America and another country, they cannot support us clearly. They cannot support us, support us clearly. Another thing is uh, maybe that we need to more influence in the UN system. UN system. I see the UN system. I've been in UN. 2014, I see I lining the UN system to so same like that. When you have a network inside strong, 
when you take it take your time to understand the system procedure inside and then you can uh, get your aspiration go through some uh, progress so that only interest of economy uh, they influence Indonesia influence another country because Indonesia they bring all country from from overseas to get still our own resource in West Papua, not only coal and copper, everything. So, you know, you see Indonesia, they just uh, influencing all like G20 and then so many economic agreement with another country. Because Indonesia, they have, uh, they too, they have a uh, loan in the international, um, international bank like IMF and ASEAN Development Bank and then China. I, last time I see that uh, in Indonesia, 10,000 trillion, the loan with, out, outside. Wow. So Indonesia, they, they, they didn't have no choice. They only have to control West Papua with military system. They have to control West Papua with military. They're careful. If not, Indonesia, no, the population, 283 million. I don't know when West Papua independent. I believe Indonesia will break. So let's talk about Philip Martin. This is the New Zealand pilot that the West Papua Liberation Army, you kidnapped him in February. He is still yeah. alive with you in the mountains. Yeah. Why did you kidnap him? Yeah. Philip Martin is uh, from New Zealand and Indonesian citizen. From 1963 up until today, we're trying to talk with Indonesia. We still fight. That fight, we give a uh, proposal, our civilian organization, church organization, including we OPM as a political organization. We're trying to negotiate with Indonesian to talk with Indonesian, dialogue with Indonesian. But Indonesian, they, they just blind. They reject everything from us. They say they're a democratic country, but they didn't implementing the democratic system. In the military perspective, we have to create our own idea to get attention from Indonesia. So you kidnapped him to get attention? So we we kidnapped uh, uh, Philip Martin, not for killing, torture, uh, and then uh, mutilate for everything, but we kidnapped for the, the political, political bargaining. And is it working? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, still under process. We know Indonesia is uh, try uh, reject everything our demand because officially we free Papua movement or OPM. We already released our statement 14 February after seven we kidnapped. 14 I released my statement to I need to talk with Indonesia. It's a two main actor, you know, Indonesian with OPM. These two men actor, when we didn't sit down in negotiation table, we will victim, victimize our civilian from Indonesia and from Papua. Yeah. It's real something happening. When we fight, Indonesian civilian dead and West Papua civilian to death. So to stop everything, we need to negotiate. Yeah. So I released that statement, but Indonesians still reject. But I... Uh, when Indonesian come to PNG, he go to Australia, maybe 4th July, come to PNG 6th July, and then when he came back to Jakarta, I see release from Indonesian uh, President Joko Widodo, he said to, we ready to talk with OPM, negotiate. But some disturb in middle group, they're trying to disturb the system. So I will wait until I'm we must negotiate with Indonesian, and then uh, we can release Philip Martin. So on July 9th, you heard that the Indonesian president is ready to negotiate. negotiate. He wants to come to the table. Yeah. But there's, there are forces at play, middlemen, that are trying to destabilize this negotiation. Yes. A negotiation after which, after which you will release Philip Martin, but not before. Who are these third forces that are trying to destabilize? Who? Yeah, who are they? We need only uh, 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 that negotiation must be be must be 
uh, facilitated by that, that country. Not that country, but that party. By a maybe third party. That party, maybe uh, one international party recommendation recommended by UN, United Nations, can facilitate us to negotiate with Indonesia. So when that negotiate, because we use that uh, opportunity to talk about our aspiration to Indonesia, political aspiration, why we fight for. So that Indonesia is very careful about that and then he reject everything. But we still, we still demand it. Do you know who is trying to destabilize the talks? Um, I see that some intelligent from Indonesia, that army group, hmm? the army, army group, oh, Indonesian army. military group, yeah. Indonesian military group, because they know, they know when, when was Papua and with Indonesia sit in international level, they know they will lose. I, they just, you know, they, because in our political uh, history, we have own reason because Indonesia is colonized, West Papua is illegal. The invasion so that, is illegal. Yeah, invasion West Papua is illegal. So they just block everything because... So where my network in Jakarta, they said the president already, already uh, recommended to somebody can talk with OPM, but the middle group, they're trying to de uh, disturbing the process. Understood, understood. Do you think that you will see freedom for West Papua in your lifetime? I believe. I, I never doubt. I believe because I know we fight for our right. We don't kill anybody and then we don't go to another nation like, like we go to Jakarta and then we fight in Jakarta now. We know God create Jakarta for Jakarta, God create Indonesia for Indonesia. God create Australia for Australia. God create America for America. And grow create with Papua for us. That's our will. So I believe we never regret. We never give up. We still fight. So like I said, um, Independent and freedom. We don't need to ask Indonesian. Even United Nations, Australian government, America. We don't need to ask. I say to all my people in West Papua, change your mind, change your perspective, change your paradigm, change your language. When you see Indonesia, it's not your enemy. Indonesian people and white people is not your enemy. They are people, they are human beings, same like us. We not fight with the people, but we fight against the colonial system. We are against the colonial system. So, and also we didn't ask freedom from Indonesia and international who United Nations, America and any other country. But the freedom, independence, and sovereignty, there is, is a fundamental right given by God. That fundamental right. America, Indonesia, they only have to realize, admit it, and respect it. That my stand, my belief. So, Indonesia, you can come with any other numbers of military. Some million people you can come in West Papua, but I will go away. This place God created to me. This place I cannot go to anywhere. I cannot go to Australia and say that this this place, this land, this forest, this sea is mine. That God created for Australia. I will die. More best and this is I say holy fight. I can die because my fight. <laughs> So that, that's my consensus. So I still uh, encourage my people, encourage all young students. You see now from I get the uh, leadership, 2017, they elect me as a chairman of this movement. I, I give so many encourage to young. So no, we cannot deny. We cannot deny. If we deny this 
struggle, this fight, you deny your fellow, you deny your integrity, and also you deny what, how God created you in this land. My message you can tell to international community, in the human being perspective, West Papua, we love everyone. We love everyone. People from any other place, we love everyone. We don't have any enemy with any other country, including Indonesia colonial. We love everyone. We only need, we need liberate, we need freely in our own land, like all, like America, like all international. So we need, in democratic perspective, human rights, they have to support us. They have, they have to support West Papua struggle and them. And tell me, are you getting support from other underground networks of freedom fighters around the world? I have. I have a network. It's not a government network, but I have network in the some other country. The underground diplomats? Yes. <laughs> the underground diplomats. <laughs> so the, I even get the mandate from uh, Free Papua Movement, uh, previous leadership. I've been in diplomat military diplomat, uh, 2011, I have, I do some on my network and then we still strong in the ground. And then I believe, I believe, I cannot say you country, but sure. one day, one day. Your fight is the flesh and bone fight of everyone's fight against the colonial system yes. and capitalism yes. and extraction yes. and the injustice of it all. Yes. So my fight is same, same like people before who, like you say, Indonesia, they have experience also with the Timur Leste, Estimo. Yeah. So before they say to Sanana Guzman and Ramos Horta, is a, you are criminal and you are, that's the leveling, uh, the leaders like that. But now I see that when Indonesia sit down with uh, Sanana Guzman, they're smiling and then they respect one another. So I believe now is Indonesian can tell me terrorist, uh, terrorist organization, OPM is terrorist organization, criminal group, but one day Indonesia will sit down with me and smiling. <laughs> <laughs> one day. <laughs> Maybe one day soon. Well, yes, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Philip Martin, we will release. We will release Philip Martin as our brother. We respect. I... I mean, I look after constitution in our first July constitution. We respect about human, human philo. So we, if Indonesian they do the propaganda, OPM will kill Philip Martin. That that there is uh, we cannot believe that mm. Indonesian mm. believe uh, maybe from February to March, there's still adaptation with our our environment. Mm -hmm. So they've been like. Uh, not not really sick, but just flu and something like that. But now it's already, it's like Papuan people. He's a Papuan mm. now. And is he sympathetic? It's, yes. I said already, this freedom we cannot deny and Indonesian also cannot deny and everyone cannot deny freedom. Freedom is our, freedom and independence is our own, own right. It's, uh, it's defined right by God. So that we cannot deny. We cannot ask Indonesia. I said last last time I interviewed in Indonesian media in national. They watch around thousand of them. They watching. I I said I how I can ask you about freedom. You not creating the freedom. You know that simple. Uh, what the Indonesia you you are not creating. You creating only nation. There you creating. You're creating the constitution of nation, but you're not creating about life and freedom. The life and freedom and independence they're given by God. That mind, you only can admit. And then you have to <laughs> respect it. I believe. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you want to learn more, I've put links to everything in the description box below. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and share the episode if you enjoyed it. To support the show, subscribe at planetcritical.com where you can read the weekly newsletter inspired by each interview. You can also become a Planet Critical patron. All links are in the description box below. 
As always, my deepest thanks to that community. Planet Critical wouldn't exist without your support. Thank you everyone for listening and for coming on this journey together.